go. Hi, welcome to this beautiful part of uh, Staffordshire. This is uh, Dernsdale Farm, fruit farm, uh, and it's a wonderful example of intensive and extensive agriculture. And it's going to help us understand a little bit more about when we talk about how we increase food production. So intensive agriculture is where the farmer will try and get as much as it can out of the land and extensive agriculture is where it's on a, a large scale, it's extensive. So this farm largely, with it being a fruit farm, is mainly producing uh, soft fruits, mainly strawberries and raspberries and that's done through uh, using polytunnels, so the plastic cover tunnels that will extend the growing season and also a system of hydroponics where the, um, the fruits themselves are fed through tiny pipes of water, just the right amount of water, just the right amount of nutrients, so nothing's going to be wasted, getting the most of what um, you can out of the land. So where I'm stood now, what also makes it um, extensive is it's a mixed farm. So although it's largely fruit, you can see we're growing here some oil seed rape, which will be used to make margarine. Um, the other point to point out now is on the uh, pack house over there. So when all the strawberries and the raspberries are picked and harvested, they're then taken to the pack house behind me where they're packed into those little punnets uh, and boxes ready for the supermarket. And uh, you can see on the roof uh, all those solar panels. So a large part of what happens in that pack house is done using sustainable and green energy, those solar panels. They did want to have uh, some wind turbines on the farm, but due to local pressure, sadly or not sadly, whichever your point of view is, that wasn't allowed to happen. But farming and food production, to be sustainable, needs to think about the whole environmental picture. And maybe going forward to wind turbines is actually a positive step forward and not a negative step forward. Uh, so we've got the oil seed rake, we've got the pack house with the solar panels and then we come round and the field over here is just pasture for the, um, the dairy herd. So cows uh, in there are, will eat the pasture uh, and then they're producing milk to be sold to the dairy. So Muller Dairy is probably about just 20 miles from here and we'll use some of the milk. Uh, and then if you keep spinning round um, you can see the uh, greenhouse, the greenhouse is the polytunnels there for the raspberries. So these polytunnels will be um, used later on in the season. So further down there are polytunnels now with strawberries in. And then later on these polytunnels will have the raspberries in. And they do, they stagger the growing so that they can then extend that growing season because you don't want all your strawberries and raspberries at once. Especially with our British summer when you're trying to plan uh, around these nice hot days when everyone wants it. Um, I think that's it really. Uh, oh no, hold on, I've remembered. So we've got, um, uh, where does the water come from from here? So we need to think about uh, using water carefully. So there's a, a reservoir uh, down there where water can be stored and certainly used in times of drought or when there's pressure, stress, water stress. The, the farmer can make sure he's got his own store of water. Uh, we use natural predators often to um, eat all the bad bugs. So in the fields here, they will be watered with a, a fine spray. So not hydroponics in here, uh, but also they'll make sure that they use um, fertilizers and pesticides that are kind to the environment. So perhaps thinking about uh, GM, uh, biotechnology, but systems that are more careful. So we don't want to destroy all the bugs, we just want to destroy the bad ones that are gonna damage the crop while maintaining that biodiversity uh, within the hedgerows around the farm. Okay, so we've got intensive, extensive, hydroponics, dairy, uh, the reservoir, the solar panels, and that is Dernsdale Farm.